appreciate y'all being here. Um, obviously, to open this thing up, um, you know, our challenge and our charge to our football team has quickly turned to, as it did Saturday night in the locker room, for this week to Friday afternoon for us to play our best football game that we played all year long. And that's always going to be a, a challenge, and that's always the focus for the week, is to play your best game that you played all year long. Saw glimpses of that the other night, especially early. And it's going to be a great challenge for us to do that this Friday afternoon. And it's been a rough three years on our football team, our football program, our fans, people that love this program, care so much about it. Last three years, there hadn't been a lot to, to cheer about. And my vision as a, as, a, as a head football coach here, the acting head football coach, as a former Razorback, a native Arkansan, my vision for Friday afternoon is for us to put aside the last three years and for us to unite for three and a half hours on Friday afternoon in Little Rock, for, for us to have a moment as a program, as one Razorback across the state, our fans that care so much about our program, our football players, our staff, the, the young men that put so much time and effort to getting ready to, to play football games that hasn't, hasn't gone the way that we wanted it to go. But for Friday, Friday afternoon, we have an opportunity playing an SEC game and a very worthy opponent in Missouri Friday afternoon for us to rally together, unite our fans uh, and our football team to create an atmosphere that, that we'll all be proud of and hopefully a product that we'll all be proud of on Friday afternoon. Barry, I know you're probably not going to tell us anything on quarterback, but got to ask, what's the status with KJ and, and Nick? And uh, you got a lot of oars on the uh, depth chart. Yeah, we, we, we do, and, that, and that's legitimate. I mean, I, we're not trying to, you know, play games or anything. It's just we're still evaluate, evaluating those guys. Um, I think that's going to be a day-to-day, hour-to-hour situation right now. A short week creates a little bit more challenge than that. Uh, we're on the field this evening as what is our Monday. It's really a Tuesday as we stand here today. And so um, I think we'll know a little bit more tomorrow about where this is heading um, as far as our, their evaluation and, and, and what we expect for them to be ready or what, who not to be ready. Yeah, yeah Barry, <clears throat> Arkansas, or Missouri's lost, I think, five in a row. They haven't won away from home yet. Kind of what, what's your take on them? Because they're obviously going through a rough patch as well. Yeah, they have, and, and they've, they've lost some very close football games, competitive physical football games. This is a physical football team. I think they take on the identity of their head coach, you know, as a former linebacker and um, a tough competitor. Uh, you can see that on both sides of the ball in special teams. They're very physical. Um, that's, that's the way they take the field. That's the way they play. Uh, you know, obviously they've had some issues and some challenges on the road. Uh, so have we. We've had our challenges at home as well. And so we know with what's at stake, you know, they still got potential, I believe, is, uh, you know, they could get it uh, to their sixth win, which would put them in um, – qualified for a bowl. I mean, I think there's some things that they're still working through there that I don't even know about. But the fact that it's a, ri a rivalry game, there's a trophy on the line. Uh, obviously, they've got a lot of plate for as well. Barry, um, if Jack Lindsay were to start, he'd be the fifth quarterback starter this year. What's it like kind of going through that? And what did you like out of what you saw of him on tape and what he did in, the, in that game the other night? Yeah, it's been a strange year, you know, for that. I mean, obviously, it's, it's – um, and, and really, to be honest with you, I mean, it's – some of that has been a reflection just of the status of our team. You know, uh, it's kind of been a microcosm a little bit of that. We've been just been inconsistent in a lot of areas. And all those guys have shown, shown flashes um, uh, when they've gotten their opportunity is where you could almost you could validate uh, their opportunity to start, you know, with some of the things they've done during the course of the even games, that the opportunities they've been given. Um, as far as Jack goes, I mean, I, you know, I've known Jack obviously for a long time and uh, kind of He's that, he's that guy that just kind of stays in the corner and stays quiet. Now, listen, he's not quiet, but he, he's got a lot of personality and our players really, really uh, gravitate toward him. But he, he's, he just knows what's going on. He just knows where to go with the ball. He knows uh, the offense, in and out. Uh, he, he's kind of got the it factor when it comes to those types of things. He just is a, you know, kind of a football junkie, really high football IQ. And uh, it was good to see him to go in and his first action really ever uh, in a game at quarterback, I thought he handled it very well, uh, extremely well. And we were obviously very excited. I was, I, was, I was happy for him. I know that was a cool moment for him. Aside from the quarterbacks, was there anybody else who was banged up that was questionable for this game? 
Well, we're still evaluating um, uh, Buster. You know, he was without, we were without him last week. We, we think he's on the road to recovery. Um, D.D. Edwards was out, didn't, wasn't able to travel with us uh, last week. Uh, those two guys are on the road to recovery. Davion Warren, I think, is potentially going to be available this week. So we've got a few guys that are on the men for sure. Jack, would you be comfortable starting him? Here? Absolutely. Things that the university released a statement on today. We understand there's some football players who've been affected. Um, how, how are you going to handle that? And what, what do you think? I'm going to coach football. That's how I'm going to handle it. I'm going to just lead our team and get us ready to play on Friday. You know, we've obviously released a statement um, that it's not a that it's not a situation where there's you know any kind of uh, you know panic or anything like that. It's just something that we're having to deal with. Um, we're dealing with it. Obviously, our care and our health of our players and our staff at all, is always at a premium. And it'll continue to be that way. Uh, but I'm just going to continue to coach football and get our guys ready to play Friday. I know you can't talk about names because of the laws, but there are football players who who've been affected by this. Well, we, we know that just, just based on the release that there's, there's players, uh, students here that have been exposed to that. So as far as the diagnosis and those types of things, we're being very proactive and uh, giving our guys the best um, immunization or uh, optimal health that we can give them. Barry, do you remember, did you have the mumps as a kid? You ever had them? No, I had the chicken pox twice, though. Get it again. Oh, no, I okay. can't. I got the chicken pox. I'm thinking not the third time. I do had the chicken pox twice. I don't remember what age I was, but oh, I had them once and okay. I had them again. But, no, I don't, think I, yeah. I don't think I had the mumps. I had the mumps, as a, so I think I'm okay, I hope. Um, hey, the, but now I, it's all making sense, Bob. Yeah. I, I, obviously, you know, Bob, Mizzou has three Fayetteville kids. I assume you, you are familiar with them. Just kind of what do you think about that? What do you think about them as players? And um, I guess maybe you, you recruited some of them. Yeah, sure. Very aware of the, all three of those guys and uh, the type of football players they are. They've all made a, a very significant contribution there uh, to Missouri. Um, obviously, I think that's, you know, that's, that's a little bit unique, a little bit strange probably for them as well. You know, they grew up under the, the nose here of, um, of our program, obviously, and they had got some pretty strong connections to our program. Uh, fortunately, it didn't, it didn't work out to get them here in this program. Um, and I think they made the best of their opportunity uh, that, that this, this laid out before them and have taken advantage of uh, their experience there and have done some good things. And, not, you know, all three good kids, all three got to know them and their families. And uh, obviously, always, always rooting for them, obviously, except for this game. Uh, Barry, obviously not a long history of the Missouri series, but now it is the trophy game, it's the season ender, and it's something that needs to build. What's your take on just the, the rivalry that, with these guys and how you feel about that? Well, it is new. Uh, I think the first thing that sticks out to me, like I told the team, there's not anybody on our football team that's beaten Missouri. Now, there was a few guys that were red shirts in 15 when we played them out here in that miserable weather uh, that saw us you know, win that trophy, but there is not one player on our team that has, has beaten them. And so... That's a rivalry, you know. I mean, that's that's, you know, that's got to mean something to you. And like I told our guys, listen, there's a lot to play for. Uh, even though that people are going to say there's not a lot to play for, um, human, in, you know, human nature says that there's not a lot. You're two and nine. It's the last game of the year. You know, you got an interim coaching situation. We don't have a lot to, lot to play for. I would, I would beg to differ. We we laid out a lot of things. I mean, here's the deal. I'll lay them out for you. Uh, you know. First of all, it's one of 12 games. You work all year round for 12 games? Shoot, you can't get ready to play? When you, you go all summer, all, all winter, 6 a.m. workouts, and you can't get ready to play one of your 12 games? Well, okay, we could stop there, in my opinion. But then there's a lot, a lot of layers on top of that. We're, we're, we're at home in Little Rock, playing an SEC game. Hadn't won, more, hadn't been, uh, won an SEC game since 2011 in Little Rock. Shoot, there's a lot to get ready for right there. Seniors, it's your last go around. The senior day that they had a few weeks ago is something that they'll never want to remember. And we're going to give those guys an opportunity to have a redo. Now, we're not going to do the dog and pony show, but we're going to acknowledge them. It's important that they get acknowledged and we get a chance to do this senior night or this senior day over again. That's important for me and for them. Um, so then you got seniors, it's their last go around. You know, that's a lot to play for. If you care about these seniors, you'll go all in on this game, okay? We've lost 18 straight SEC games. We've lost 18 straight SEC games. Seven of those have been by one score. Seven have been by one score or less. So we got a chance to the last game of this tough season 
got a chance to, to break that streak. I, I, to me, that sounds like there's a whole lot to play for. Uh, and that's not me trying to convince our guys of that. Those are just the facts. And pick, up, pick out whatever one of those ones you want to pick, and let's get ready to go play. Because I know Missouri's going to be ready to play, and I feel confident that we're going to be ready to play as well on Friday afternoon. I could probably think of a few more, but those are just the ones on top of my head. Barry, what do you remember about Jonathan Nance's time here? He had the one really good season, and then you know didn't do much, and then he went in the portal. Um, and do you guys have to change your signals or anything just because Nance would be familiar with you know calls? It's and golly, that seems better. like a long time ago. He was a part of our program. I mean, it just it really does. There's been a lot of things changed since that point in time. Um, you know, obviously, it's one of those situations where it, this isn't a he's either playing for us or playing for them situation. If his eligibility would have already expired if he would have maintained, you know, basically playing with us. Um, and so I, I don't remember a lot. I mean, John did some good things for us. He did. I mean, he made some plays. The most, thing, the, the most obvious thing I remember is the Texas A&M game is he got behind A&M a couple times, made some big plays. I guess that would have been in uh, 16. Is that right? I think 2016 or 17, 17, yeah. Seven, in 17, he got behind him a couple times, had a broke the 100-yard mark, I think, receiving. Um, you know, a good, a good player, there's no doubt. And I know he's done some really good things for Missouri. And, you know, that, that's, in football, and, uh, in the recruiting circles, and, and ge geographically, when you're this close together, I mean, you're, you're going to play people on the other team that you know and you're familiar with, whether it's a high school teammate or uh, – and, and now it's becoming more common for it to be a college teammate via the transfer portal. So um, it's not necessarily groundbreaking. Um, or earth shattering news that we're playing, um, you know, a guy that used to play for us. And so, um, you know, we wish him the best and have always been rooting for him, except when we play against him. I don't anticipate us having to make many, many major changes. We've evolved a little bit even since he's left. And so I don't anticipate that being a, being an issue. Has there been anything that you guys have like mixed up just to kind of change the mojo, uh, whether it's something simple or maybe the food that you're eating or yeah, we've Anything done a lot. Like that. Yeah, we've done a lot of that. We we changed up a lot of things, um, including some meals, uh, some meeting structure, uh, practice, uh, practice flow, and uh, things. I've tried to just, you know, intentionally uh, mix it up uh, for them, just psychologically. And for me, I wanted to put my, you know, my my um, blueprint or my handprint, fingerprint on it. You know, to I had some ideas of some things that, you know, that I would want to do and change, and I've implemented those. They haven't been drastic, but. Uh, I think they've been noticeable to our players. Um, and, you know, one of the things we talked about, and I told them the first day I stood in front of them, is that we wanted to have some fun. I said, there's going to be some changes that I think you're going to enjoy. Just go with them. And so uh, they've been great. They, they've been great. And um, we're, we've got a, even a short week causes some more changes this week. Um, and so, but, yeah, we've, we've done some things here and there uh, from a motivational standpoint, from a team meeting standpoint that are different. I think they enjoyed it when we gave, we had Popeyes the other day. We had a, a, I enjoyed it. I know that. I think they did too. So just some small changes like that that I think that has been refreshing to them. It's obviously Arkansas won at Kelly Bryant when he visited here and everything. Just what do you, kind of what were the reasons you wanted him as a quarterback and kind of how has he evolved at Missouri? Well, I think his, I think the drawing point there was obviously Chad, Chad's relationship with him previously and his experience as an incumbent starter at, at Clemson. That made him very attractive, attractive to uh, a lot of programs. But obviously, I think the, the, the relationship there uh, gave us a leg up as far as being in his final two or three or however it was. I don't know. But I didn't really get to know him that well. You know, he came on as official during a game, game weekend and then had one opportunity as a staff. We went to go see him um, back home where he was at and got to know him, you know, for a few hours during that period of time. But I was really kind of a – a bystander in that and just kind of observed um, from a distance on how, how we interacted with him. And so, um, you know, obviously he ended up picking the spot that he felt was best for him. And uh, here we go. We're going to play against him on Friday. Well, I mean, uh, you, you know, I mean, I think he's done some good things. There's no doubt about that. I hadn't had a chance to study him as quite as much as I had last week with LSU and seeing him on TV. And I mean, I've seen him on spots here or there, but He's obviously a very dangerous quarterback. I mean, he can beat you with his arm and he can beat you with his legs. And so anytime a quarterback can do that, it creates a challenge. Um, and so uh, he's a playmaker. There is no doubt about that. He's a playmaker and he's got a good cast around him. Um, and so it'll be a great challenge for us on Friday. You mentioned at your initial press conference last Monday that 
Arkansas has been in SEC championship games. It can be done here. The next coach, what does he have to do? What, what are the key parts to build Arkansas football back to winning division and competing for championships? Well, I mean, I think you, um, you know, I think there's a lot of things, you know, that need to be done. Um, you, you, I think you have to recruit. You know, obviously, that's that's always that's always the deal. I mean, you're going to have to you got to recruit. I think that more than that, it's evaluation and developmental. I mean, I think those are critical aspects of that. You got to recruit. You got to swing hard. You got to tighten up your radius. Uh, I think Chad had a, a really good plan and model in that regard. Tighten up your radius. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you you better evaluate and you better develop them. And that's that's really critical here. It always has been. You got to start with a tight radius and, and, and identify those players that you think can help you win games, whether it's immediately or three years down the line. You have to go get them. Uh, you have to go all out and do everything you can to get those guys that are close in proximity, especially the guys in this board, inside this borders. You got to get them and you got to beat the bushes for them uh, because there, there's some out there that, that you got to just dig a little deep for. And then, then, then you start spreading that out a little bit. You know, you go, go out to your radius where it's three to five hours, you know, obviously in Texas and East Texas and DFW. Those are important areas. But it's about recruiting. Uh, and, when I, and I say that, it's not about, it, it's, it's not about um, you know, the, the splash of signing day. Uh, is, that, is that good? Sure it is, but it's, it's about getting it right. You know, I think that's the, the, the critical part there is you got to get it right. You got you to evaluate and then you got to develop. And if you'll do that steadily, there's enough around here if you get the right guys to build it. Uh, you got to coach them up. Part of development is coach them up, you know, obviously. And, um, but yeah, you got to have somebody who's got a plan and knows how to do that and just build it slowly and surely and steadily and, and create a foundation there with those guys that are close in proximity that identify with Arkansas. They don't necessarily have to be from here, but that they identify with this program and understand what kind of program and the history and tradition that's, that's here. And, and that's, that's where you start. What's the week look like, the itinerary? What are you guys going to do for Thanksgiving meal, when you go down, all that kind of stuff? You went, you went lighthearted on me. You went from a real hard question to, to now for the week. Well, that's the easy part is the itinerary. Well, tonight, we're going to, I push practice back tonight. So we're, gonna, we're not going to go on the field to about 8 o'clock tonight for class conflicts and and to allow us as coaches some more time to game plan. Uh, it's a, today is a Tuesday, even though it's a Monday, so this is a critical day. It's the introductory of the game plan and introduction of the game plan and the general schemes that we anticipate using. And so we bought ourselves about three or four more hours this afternoon of prep time to, uh, to make sure that when we get out there and we start preparing and talk to our players about what we're, how we're gonna attack them this week, that, that it's not 50% done. It's not 75% done. It's it's 100% done for the base game plan. So we're going to do that tonight. Tomorrow will be a quick turnaround, back to normal time. Uh, Wednesday we're going to move it up uh, just a little bit to allow the non-travel squad guys to, to get on the road and be, uh, have Thanksgiving with their families. We're going to have Thanksgiving lunch here um, with all of our families and our players. And then we're going to load up and uh, go to Little Rock. What's the ch challenge to the defense? You know, you, you've had a lot of good moments defensively, but when the dam breaks, it breaks. How, how do you challenge them and get them ready for this weekend? And what are some of the positive things you've seen from them? Well, I saw early on during the game the other day, I, I think we all saw a group that was that we were making some plays. We were rallying up, tackling. We had some TFLs, balls breaking, bro broken up, uh, secondary making plays on the on the ball. Uh, we we really, I was really impressed early on with the way we were flying around and uh, just competing. Uh, obviously, we ran into a, I think you guys all see this, I mean, a fantastic offensive football team, uh, even better in person than I thought. They were a whole lot more uh, better, you know, uh, more intimidating or not intimidating, impressive is the word, in person than they were on my couch watching the ESPN broadcast against Ole Miss the week before because you see it on ground level and you see the length and the size of the wideouts and the power of the running back. You know, we just, despite playing really hard and competing really hard early, we just got in some spots there that, you know, we became vulnerable a little bit to a great offense. And so the challenge is, the challenge is what I said before. Let's, let's gather that thing back up together and let's play our best defensive game that we played all year long for 60 minutes, eliminating those moments and those lapses where we might have a bust or we, or we miss a tackle. We've got to eliminate and purge that um, for 60 minutes for us to play our best football game on defense. That's what we have to do on Friday afternoon. And so 
but yeah, I saw some moments there that was like, I was, I was really impressed early on with the way we were playing. And then I think just ultimately physically, we, we just kind of got worn down a little bit. Coach, you recruit the state of Arkansas very heavily, and you have for a while. Uh, I think there were only maybe six in-state offers this past class for you guys. Do you see the, the trend of Arkansas high school football increasing, decreasing in, in talent level and, and development in no, high school? I don't think it's decreased. I don't, I don't think it's changed a whole lot over the years. I think, um, I think beauty's in the eye of the beholder a little bit. Uh, and I don't mean that negatively towards, uh, negatively towards anybody that's you know, that's been the head football coach here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be partial and biased towards uh, kids that grow up in this state because I, I was one, uh, if that's the correct gram grammar. Uh, I guess it's better than I are one, you know, but I was, I was one. And I grew up in this state and, um, you know, Saturdays was about Razorback football and um, that's all it was about. And when I got an opportunity, when I got an opportunity to do it and to come here and live out a dream, um, I was vested. Um, the community I came from was vested in my success. And I think that's always a really strong foundational point when you identify kids in this state that can help you again that's not just saying finding the guy that can help you year one there's players that can help you maybe not until year two or year three and there's been a lot of those guys over the years here that when they've gotten their opportunity in year two year two and year three they just took off uh, now does that mean that there's 15 guys a year in the state that can probably help us win sec games there, there's not that that would be an anomaly if that was the true you know if that ever happened but is there a foundation of guys in this state that you can start and build around? Um, there's no doubt in my mind. And um, that, that's, that's going to be really important. It's always been important for me. We haven't necessarily gotten all those guys or gone after all those guys for, for whatever the circumstance. You know, there's been quirky circumstances that have come up over the years where maybe we already have a commitment at the position or, you know, we just weren't sure how to project him. And, I think that's the job of the coach here is you got to really look through and comb through the state, sift through the state really, really thoroughly and find that diamond in the rough. I'm not saying there's 10 of them uh, or five of them. There may just be one of them per year. But, boy, you can't afford for them to go somewhere else and, and, and have a good career. You just can't. Uh, we need them here. And uh, that's, my, that's my belief, and it always will be my belief. Into this week as a staff, knowing big changes are on the way and that you all – might not be together after this week. Yeah, well, you know, the likelihood of that is about zero, you know, that we'll be intact and be working together. I mean, we all understand that's part of the profession. Um, I think you, uh, I think it's really pretty easy. Uh, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, you do it for the players. I mean, that's why we got in coaching. I said this at my presser, uh, I'm calling them pressers now. I guess I'm short, I'm getting more comfortable. Uh, you know, after the game is you don't, you don't get in coaching uh, to strut around on the sideline and say we won the game. You get in coaching to, to pour into the life of the guy that you're coaching to give them the moments that you had as a player, to give them the opportunities to experience success that you had, or you give them the opportunities to advance through and persevere through disappointments like we have as players. That's why you get in coaching. So uh, I think you just got to look yourself in the mirror and say, well, I've got five days left. I'm you know, I may or may not be employed here in, in five or six days or two weeks or whatever. But really, at the end of the day, I got in this for these players. And so I'd owe it, I owe it to them to give my very best to give them the opportunity to win this football game on Friday afternoon for all the said reasons I talked about earlier. It's one of 12. It's an SEC game at home. Our seniors last day, we want to honor them. We've lost 18 games in a row in the SEC. If that can't get you ready, then as a player, as a coach, I don't know what can. And so I've been really pleased with the efforts of those coaches um, of this week, even in a quick turnaround. Uh, we're very focused on that. You know, short week helps that. You know, uh, there's, a lot of, lot of, there's not a lot of downtime right now. There, not that there is in coaching in general. But um, in, a quick, in a quick week, I mean, it's, you've got to have laser focus and get this game plan going and get these, get these players their best opportunity to play on Friday. So that's my answer to that one. A minute ago about developing in-state guys that maybe aren't you know four stars or whatever. John David White he had a couple of nice catches the other night. Uh, what what do you thought about him and maybe he could be one of those guys you can develop and coach. He up? epitomizes he epitomizes what I'm talking about. 
I mean, there's a guy that the Razorbacks run through his family um, deep and uh, who we got, a, we got an opportunity to bring him here and turn down some scholarship offers at other places to come here and live his dream as a non-scholarship player. And, and that's a really critical factor here too. Uh, when you talk about Arkansas kids, not all those kids that can help you are, are going to be scholarship guys to begin with. They're not. In fact, a lot of them aren't. But those are the guys that you have to identify, like a John David White, a Jack Lindsay, who came here on their own dime. You got to identify those guys, and you got to give them an opportunity to come here. You got you got to make them known, make it known to them that they're important to the way you build this place, and you you invest time in them. You don't wait till after signing date or a week before signing date and say, hey. Oh, hey, if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't work out for you, you want to come try to walk on? No, you, you recruit them and you, you make them. Uh, the, rule, the rules have really laxed in that area in the last few years to where you, you actually have access to, to um, recruit non-scholarship players in a loose term. You can't go on there. You can't go see them at home. You can't, you can't bring them on an official visit. But there's things you can do to make them feel connected to this program and make them feel wanted in this program. And we did that with guys like, like Jack Lindsay and with, uh, you know, uh, John David, um, the guys and the guys they can help. And that's exactly what we were, I was talking about earlier, just to clarify about, you know, if there's 10 kids a year, well, five of them may be scholarship. Five of them may not be able to help you until two or three years down the line, but you want them. And man, I couldn't be prouder for John David White. I mean, he epitomizes what it means uh, to have Razorback spirit and legacy, and we can't get enough of guys like that. Rock, you know, there was a lot of speculation in recent years about not playing there, but that seems to have calmed down. Um, just your experience growing up in the state, I mean, how, how do you feel about Little Rock? What do you expect, even though it's been a rough stretch, like you said, what do you expect from the crowd on Friday? Well, I expect, a, I, I, I shouldn't say I expect, I hope, you know, I, I hope for, um, our, our, our fans and the, the people that are on the fence about coming to this game, despite if the weather looks bad or if it's going to rain or the results of where we're at this year. But I just hope that, like I said, on Friday afternoon, we'll, we'll have a football team and a, and a fan base that will unite and really display that true Razorback spirit that, that we all know the state has. Um, even though that despite the disappointments, the moments I've had there in Little Rock, Little Rock's a special place to me and my family. I mean, uh, obviously my time in high school, I got a chance to play in a state championship game there. Uh, my senior year, my brother played in a state championship game there. My father coached in 11 state championship games in Little Rock. I was a part of four or five of those. Um, attended every other, all the other ones. So that right there made makes War Memorial a special place for me and my family. But then as my time as a Razorback, some of my greatest moments, um, necessarily, not necessarily my greatest plays or my greatest pl games I played, but my, some of my greatest moments happen in that stadium. Um, and I just want our guys to experience that on Friday. I, I want our guys to walk away from Friday afternoon to have their moment. Um, and obviously the crowd and the support from our crowd is a huge part of that. And I've asked them, and I've talked about that on Saturday night, is that that's what I want them to show up. Not just show up, I want them to show up inside. And not just stay on the golf course. I want them to come inside. I want that hog walk to be an incredible experience and moment for them. But I also know that our, our fans, what they want in return is they want a football team that matches the spirit that they're gonna bring. And that's my charge and my challenge. Hey Barry, I just Real quick, are you guys flying or bussing down? Bussing. And, and okay, both ways. Yeah. Um, and also, it's a 70% chance of rain. Do you like a sloppy track for this one? Uh, well, I think in the past we've flown back some, and you know, just as uh, for the time of getting back and the turnaround for next week, you know, obviously it being the last game of the year, that makes it obviously, com you know, just common sense financially and just, you know, logistically just to take the buses there and back. Uh, that's the way I remember it, um, and I like it. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting on that bus on Friday with those police cars in front of us. Um, blood pumping. I'm excited about that. I really am. Because um, th th I, I get flooded with memories of doing the same thing as a player, and those are special memories for me, and I'm proud of that. And I want from the moment we step on that bus to the moment we get back on that bus for this to be a 
an experience that these guys will remember. Rain, sleet, snow, fog, I don't know, fog bowl like the gate, what did we play North Carolina, the fog bowl? Is there any fog coming in? Okay, so we don't have to worry about the fog. 70% chance of rain, that means it's a 30% chance of sun, Trey. And that's what I'm going with, you know? Hey, grab a poncho. They're pretty cheap. Let's get a poncho and let's get in there and let's roll. That's what I would say. Let's see, let's let, let's let, uh, is Ned Permy still on there? Is he still on there or did he retire? I think he retired. We'll get Ned Permy to give us a better forecast as we get closer to the week down in Little Rock and let's roll, you know? And so I, I think our guys are going to be excited no matter what the weather is and I hope our fans will be the same.